Okay, we are gonna go over questions 31 through 40 on the EOC practice test part two. On this portion of the review, you are allowed to use your calculator, okay? So number 31 says, what is the formula to find the discriminant? It's going to be B squared minus four A C. And then it asks us, what does the discriminant tells, tell us? It tells us how many and what type of roots the equation has. All right, and then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna answer number 31 in the test questions. So now it asks us, find the value of the discriminant. <clears throat> so we need to first label our values. A is three, B is two, C is six. And you should remember by now that this is A, this is B, and this is C. And then we're gonna plug those into our formula. So it's B squared minus four times A times C. Two squared is four, negative four times three is negative 12, negative 12 times six is negative 72. four minus 72 is negative 68. So the value of our discriminant is B, negative 68. Back over here, number 32. Given a word problem, identify all numbers and what they represent. So we're just going to kind of come up with a word problem here. Um, 37 is the cost of an item. 1.06 is 100% of the cost plus tax. So it's the cost of the item. plus tax. X, how many, num how many items you're buying? So number of items and C is your total cost of items with tax. The Jones family plans a trip to the amusement park and purchases a family package for $128. They also wanna buy lunch and souvenir cups. The chicken platter cost eight fifty each, and the burger platter cost nine fifty each. The souvenir cups cost a dollar or ten dollars. I'm sorry, which includes unlimited refills. Mr. and Mrs. Jones have a budget. They are trying to decide. Mr. and Mrs. Jones have a budget and are trying to decide who will order which platter and who will buy a souvenir cup. Let X represent the number of chicken platters, Y represent the number of burger platters, and Z represent the number of souvenir cups. Which of the following algebraic expressions can be used to describe the amount of money the Jones family will spend before sales tax based on the number of each meal and souvenir cups they purchase? All right, so we need to highlight all of the relevant information that we need for this question. Um, you won't have a highlighter, so underline it, square it, whatever. Matter of fact, let's just do that. So it's like what you're doing in the test. Um, so we know they're paying $128 for the family package. 
uh, chicken is eight fifty. Burger nine fifty. Souvenir cups ten dollars. They have a budget. Blah blah blah. X is the number of chicken platters. Y number of burger platters. Z souvenir cups. All right, so let's write all of this down. We've got package 128 chicken they said was x and they said they were 850 each burger Y, and they said those were nine fifty each. Souvenir cups, um, we'll just say cups. Is Z, and they said they're ten dollars. So they wanna know which of the expressions can be used to describe the amount of money the Jones family will spend before sales tax based on the number of each meal and souvenir cups they purchase. So if you um, define your variables kind of the way that we did, you kind of already have it set up together. So they're gonna pay $128 for the package. Then they're gonna pay 850, so plus 850 per however many chickens they get, so X, plus 950 times however many burgers they get plus 10 times however many cups they get so we kind of already did it when we defined our variables we just put it all together in an equation if you look over at our answer choices c matches exactly what we wrote so your answer is C. Number 33, find 22% of $280. So we're gonna take 280. And multiply it by 22%, which is 0.22. Get my calculator here. And you get 6160. So 22% of 280 is 6160. And it was talking about dollars, so you're gonna wanna write it in dollar amount. You guys get it. Sixty one sixty. So then we come over here to number thirty three. And it says the profit a company earns every month depends on the amount of product sold P for eight hundred and fifty five dollars each and the amount spent in rent, utilities and other expenses, which always totals to six thousand seven hundred and eighty. The CEO of the company earns 15% of this profit. How much does the CEO earn if the company sells 250 products in a given month? So we've got quite a thing, quite a few things going on here. We need to find out the profit, subtract the utilities and everything, and then 15% of whatever's left over is how much the CEO makes, okay? So we are going to have 855. Let me back up. P is the product. Okay. 
which is $855 each. Um, rent and utilities and everything. Utilities is $6,780. CEO makes 15% and they want to know how much does the CEO earn if the company sells 250, okay? So you've got 855 times P, which is how many products they sell. Then you subtract the 6,780 And then whatever you have left over, you multiply it times 15%, okay? So again, we have 855. P is now gonna be 250, because that's what they said here that they sold. So times 250 minus 6,780 multiplied by 15%. Use your calculator. 855 times 250 is 213,750 minus 6,780 times 15%. 213,750 minus 6,780 is 206,000. 970, multiply that by 15%. And you get $31,045.50. And that is how much the CEO will earn. So your answer is C. Number 34, solve an equation with variables on both sides, create your own and solve it. All right, so I am going to use 20 minus 7x equals 6x minus 6. All right, we can do the same thing we always do, which is draw your upside down T and start off always by getting rid of your smallest variable first. So subtract 6x from both sides. Negative 7x and negative 6x is negative 13x. That canceled out. Now I'm gonna subtract 20 from both sides. Okay, when I do that, the 20s cancel out. And you could do a, a whole other line of this if you wanted to. Um, I know we're used to doing it by separate lines. I'm just running out of room, so I'm doing it this way. So negative 6 and negative 20 is negative 26. Now we need to divide both sides by negative 13. These 13s cancel each other out and you get x is equal to two. Negative 26 divided by negative 13 is, or yeah, by negative 13 is two. So now we're gonna come over here. And solve the following equation for x, you have six, times 4x plus 5 equals 3 times x plus 8 plus 3. They want us to round to the nearest hundredth. All right, so we will have 6 times 4x plus 5 equals 3 times x plus 8 plus 3. Distribute first before anything else. 
So six times four X is 24 X. Six times five is 30. So you get 24 X plus 30 equals three times X is three X. Three times eight is 24. plus three. Combine your like terms. So we still have 24 X plus 30 equals three X plus 27. All right, now draw your upside down T and get rid of your smallest variable first. So we're going to get 21x, these cancel out, 21x plus 30 equals 27. Now we need to subtract 30 from both sides. Remember, we're trying to get this x by itself, so get everything away from the x. Subtract 30 from both sides, you get 21x. equals negative three. Divide both sides by 21. And it says round to the nearest hundredth, so you can't leave it in fraction form. You're going to need to get out your calculator, divide negative three by 21 and you get zero, negative 0 0.1428 They said round to the nearest 100th, so you're gonna get X is equal to 0 0.14. So your answer is B. Number 35, set up a proportion to find a missing value, create your own situation and solve it. All right, so I'm gonna do five over eight equals X over 24. This is where you can use the butterfly. Multiply across like with the butterfly. So you get 8x equals 5 times 24, which is 120. Yeah, on this EOC, you have no room for error. So even if 24 times 5 or whatever we just did was something simple, you should still use your calculator so that there's no room for error. Okay, 8x equals 120, divide both sides by 8. You divide both sides by 8, you get x is equal to 15. Come over here to number 35. One of the greatest assets of a secretary is often his or her ability to on the keyboard of a computer. Ms. Garcia has been recognized as the most outstanding typist at a prestigious firm because of her outstanding typing speed. The table below displays data collected from her most recent evaluation. So in one minute, she types 70 words, two minutes, 140, three minutes, 210, four minutes, 280. If Ms. Garcia maintains a constant speed, consistent with the results above, how many words will she type in 49 minutes? So in one hour, she typed 70 words. They want to know hmm. the way that I have this set up is not right. Okay. Y'all just got to notice, look at something here. Um, it asks 49 minutes. All of our, 
Oh, no, those are minutes. Okay, I'm sorry. I was thinking those were hours. I'm not awake. Um, so 49 minutes. So you got one over 70 equals 49 over X. So in one minute, she types 70 words. They want to know how many words can she type in 49 minutes. So if you do butterfly, you get X is equal to 70 times 49 which is 3,430. So your answer is B. Number 36, given two cell phone plans, how would you determine the number of minutes when the cost would be the same? So you would, write a multi-step equation with variables on both sides of the equal sign so they are set equal to each other. So example, M is going to be our number of minutes. So we have one plan that is $39.99 plus 45 cents a minute. And we have one that is $44.99 plus 40 cents a minute. Get rid of your smallest variable first. So we will get rid of 0.40 first. So we're moving our variables over to the left. So we're gonna move our constants over to the right. So we're gonna subtract 39.99 from both sides. All right, so we know this is canceled out. This is canceled out. 0.45 minus 0.40 is 0 0.05. M equals uh, Forty-four ninety-nine minus thirty-nine ninety-nine is five dollars. Divide both sides by point zero five, and M would equal a hundred. So at one hundred minutes, both cell phone plans would cost the same. Okay, we're gonna come over here for number 36. Michaela is considering joining a movie club. I don't know what just happened. Okay, <laughs> Michaela is considering joining a movie club. The registration fee is $24. The cost of mov movie tickets will be $6 if she joins. If she does not join, there's no registration fee and she will pay $9 per movie ticket. For what number of tickets will the two plans be the same amount of money? So we have our fee. It's $24. The cost of movie tickets will be $6. So the fee is 
24, the tickets are six. If she does not join, there's no registration fee, but she pays $9 for tickets. So on one hand, we have $24 plus $6 per ticket equals $9 per ticket. They wanna know what number of tickets will the two plans be the same? So subtract 6T from both sides, because that's our smaller variable. You get 24 equals 3T, divide both sides by three, and you get T is equal to eight. So at eight tickets, both plans will be the same price. If she's going to buy more than eight tickets, then she's better off with the $24 uh, registration fee plus the $6 tickets. So your answer for that one is B. Number 37. Write and solve a system of equations. If adult tickets sell for $20 and children's tickets sell for 15, how many of each are sold if eight tickets are sold and $145 was collected? All right, so we've got, I'm gonna put this up because it's not letting me, I can't zoom out more, I'll cut off the problem but I want to be able to write all the information you need. So we're going to use A for adult. We're going to use C for children's. Adult are 20, children's 15. We sell eight tickets and made $145. All right, those are all the things that we need. So we, a system of equations, remember is two different equations, two different variables, and you need to solve for both. So for the first one, we know we sold eight tickets total. So we would have A plus C. Hold on, my pen is acting up again. A plus C equals eight, because we sold adult tickets and children's tickets and we sold eight total. Then we sold um, adult tickets were $20. So $20 adult tickets plus $15 children's tickets. And we made $145. Okay, so there's your system of equations. I'm going to do elimination and I'm going to, um, I'm gonna eliminate the C's first, okay? So to do that, I need to take the first system and multiply both by negative 15, because we want to get the opposite of what we have here. We have a positive 15. We're going to get rid of it by making it negative 15. You've got to multiply both sides by negative 15. So you now get negative 15A minus 15C equals 8 times negative 15 is negative my pen's not writing again. Negative. Oh, what is going on here? And something just flew off the wall at me. I'm not in my own classroom, so. Oh, there we go. Um, negative 120. There we go. So we are now going to work with we still have 20A plus 15C equals 145. 
minus 15A minus 15C. Who are you looking for, Ms. Van Auken? They are, her students are in the auditorium right now. She's testing. Uh-huh. So negative 15A minus 15C equals negative 120. So the 15 and 15 are going to cancel out. You're left with 5A equals 145 minus 120 is 25. Divide both sides by 5. You get A is equal to 5. So we know we had 5 adult tickets. We can take that and we can plug that back in to the original A plus C equals 8. That's the easiest way to do it. So it would be 5 plus C equals 8. Subtract 5 from both sides. And you get C is equal to 3. So they bought 5 adult tickets and 3 children's tickets. A student government organization is selling Christmas trees as a fundraiser on Friday. They sold five noble fir trees and three Douglas fir trees for a total of $420. 12 on Saturday, 12 noble fir trees and nine Douglas fir trees were sold for a total of 1,080. What is the cost per tree for each type? All right, so we've got, we'll say noble. So on Friday, they sold five noble we'll use n for noble d for douglas fir so on friday they sold five noble fir and three Douglas fir, remember just write as you read five noble fir trees, three Douglas fir trees for a total of $420. So five noble plus three Douglas for a total of 420. Same thing here, 12 noble fir trees, so 12N and nine Douglas fir for a total of 1080. Okay, now we're going to solve our system of equations. And I see, I see 3D and 9D. So I'm going to eliminate that by multiplying this top equation by negative three, both sides, left and right. Okay, so then we get negative 15n minus 9d. I'm taking this 3 and I'm multiplying that. That's where I'm getting these numbers. Equals 420 times negative 3 is negative 1260. Okay, so now forget about this one for now. These are our two new equations that we're going to use. Okay, we eliminated the 9d. So we have 12 minus 15n is negative 3n equals 1080 minus 1260 is negative 180. Divide both sides by negative 3. You get n is equal to 60. So we know our noble furs are equal to $60. Look at your answer choices. We can eliminate A. We can eliminate B. We can eliminate C. That only leaves us with D as our answer. 
Now you can go and plug that 60 back in and solve for D if you want to, if you're unsure about your answer being correct. So we can have five times 60 plus three D equals 420. Five times 60 is 300 plus three D equals 420. Subtract 300 from both sides. You get 3D is equal to 120. And then divide both sides by 3. You get D is equal to 40. And you can go back over and look at your answer choice, and that is correct. We got Noble Fur was 60, Douglas Fur was 40. I'm running out of time before I have a class come in here, so I'm trying to speed this up a little bit. Number 38, and this is also going to go with 41, 42, and 43. So our next video, we'll go over it again. Um, but given a quadratic equation, after how many seconds will it take for an object to hit the ground? You're going to use your quadratic formula, which is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Our value for a is negative 16, b is 64, c is 80. So we're going to use all of those numbers to plug into the quadratic formula. You should always write the value of your letters down. It makes it a lot easier. So we have negative b. Now, you'll notice as I'm saying the quadratic formula, as I'm saying the letters, I'm writing the numbers. I'm writing the values that go with it. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. We're going to start solving. Oh, I'm sorry. Duh, I should finish this. Over to a. All right, so then we get negative 64 plus or minus the square root. 64 squared is 4096 plus negative 4 times negative 16 times 80 is 5120 over negative 32. Okay. Keep breaking it down, keep simplifying. So now we have negative six, I'm sorry, negative 64 plus or minus the square root of 4096 plus 5120 is uh, 9,216 divided by negative 32. The square root, well, we'll do negative 64 plus or minus the square root of 9,216 is 96 over negative 32. So now if you break this up into our plus and minus and solve it two different ways, we have negative 64 plus 96 divided by negative 32. And then we have negative 64 minus 96 divided by negative 32. So negative 64 plus uh, 96 equals 32 divided by negative 32 equals negative one. Negative 64 minus 96 is negative 160 over negative 32. Negative 160 divided by negative 32 is 5. 
So our answer, since we're talking about how many seconds it will take for an object to hit the ground, you can't have a negative amount of time. So our answer is going to be five. It's gonna take five seconds. Number 39. An object is thrown upward from the top of an 80 foot tower. The height H of the object after T seconds is represented by the quadratic equation. H equals negative 16 T squared plus 64 T plus 80. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use our quadratic formula. So X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC over two A. My value for A is negative 16. Value for B is 64. Value for C is 80. Plug those numbers in, you get negative X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four A C over two A. If you guys look, this is the same problem that we just did. It took me a second to realize it, but this is the same problem that we just did on the workspace. So we already know our answer is going to be five. If y'all will give me just a second, I'm gonna try and finish up these last two problems. Actually, no, I'm not because I don't wanna rush. All right, so I'm going to stop for now. We will come back later and I will finish the rest of the questions in another video. All right, see you guys later.